I have terrible aim and worse reflexes. I've played over 15,000 labs raids and I'm going to teach you how I changed my playstyle so that I don't have to be the fastest and most accurate aimer to be able to murder everything on labs. The concept is simple. For any location on a map, there is an optimal routine to clear it of players. When you've heard nothing, seen nothing, everything looks normal and you don't know if there is a five man camp in corners or if it is completely clear. The main goal of this routine is to increase the likelihood that you are already aiming at a player the moment they appear on your screen, thus reducing the need for fast and accurate reactive aim. I'm going to teach you 19 concepts for clearing effectively and how to apply them to your favorite map. Assuming you are running high pen rounds, you should always be aiming at either standing or crouching head height, as shown by the dotted lines. Here you see me not aiming at head height, and notice the distance required to aim at the head once they appear on my screen. Compare that to the second instance where I am already aiming at head height. In general, default to aiming at standing head height, but if you notice players favoring crouch holding on a particular corner, make an exception as needed. Sometimes I also flick between aiming at standing and crouching head height while approaching a corner, so that it is easier to accurately swap if I am caught off guard. Your routine will require both ADSing and hip firing. Here are some points to consider when deciding which to use for a given angle. How accurate is your hip fire? I suggest hip firing only at angles you know you can accurately hit headshots. And then beyond that, ADS so that you aren't unnecessarily penalizing yourself by using hip fire. Practice your hip firing using this guide. If you ADS too close to a corner, then that can result in the gun model blocking vision of a crouch player as shown here. This one is pretty simple. Adjust your pre-aim height depending on the terrain. For example, here if I want to aim at standing head height, then I need to be aware that they are elevated. This will be trickier the greater the height difference is between you and where you are pre-aiming. But an easy way to practice is to play offline against AI and let them show you the head height position at different spots. When moving around a corner that has an upcoming far angle that you would like to pre-aim, should you follow the exact edge of the wall or pre-aim the further angle? The answer is to do both. This is what can happen if you pre-aim the further angle without following the edge of the wall. See how much I need to adjust once the player appears on my screen, compared to when I'm following the edge of the wall, then pre-aiming the further angle. If you pre-aim too close to the wall, you stuff your own barrel, making it more difficult to accurately pre-aim. To correct, simply move further away from the angle. Prioritize right hand peeking over left hand peeking because you expose less of your body on a right hand than on a left hand for the same amount of vision as shown here. If you cannot avoid a left hand, look for cover you can run to from which you can then right hand. Or replan the path you would like to take altogether so that you aren't forced into a left hand. Weapon to hand switching is on the roadmap, so depending on how it is implemented, this section may become obsolete. If you are presented with multiple angles to clear, there may be an obvious order to clear them. For example, if you have two spots to clear, top of the box is to the left and behind this door to the right. If you clear right first, then you expose yourself to the left. However, if you clear left first, you don't expose yourself to the right. Keep in mind this won't always be available everywhere and sometimes you'll have to gamble. You may have heard of the concept of slicing the pie before. It refers to when peaking a large area, we slice up that area into quadrants and sequentially clear them like so. This allows us to focus our attention on one spot at a time without exposing ourselves to an angle that we haven't yet cleared. How do you clear two or more angles when clearing either means exposing yourself to the other? If you have no other choice except to take this pathway, then it's a gamble. Over time, you need to learn the more popular angle that people like to hold, clear it first, then as quickly as you can clear the other angle. Alternatively, you can use utility like grenades like so. However, this usually isn't practical in real raids as you would need a ridiculous number of grenades to clear every angle that is like this. And it's nice to have grenades available for when you PVP later in the raid. When possible, I prefer to peek for info using peeks like a run past pre-look rather than hard peeking as it is a much safer way to check for players. Then if you spot a player, it is easy to pre-aim and pre-fire them like so. Oh, I know where he is. Did you see him? I saw him. There he is. Did I see him? 
When I'm forced to approach two angles at the same time and I can't employ the slicing the pie concept as discussed earlier, I like to flick between them as it makes it easier for me to flick to the player if they appear where I'm not currently aiming, like so. Oh, I like to pre-fire some angles if it is difficult to visually clear them, for example, the outer black door, the stair doors at green level, and green door. But this can cost a lot of ammo, especially if you're doing a blind every oh. raid, and it could let other players in the raid know where you are. Should you peek sharp or wide? Peeking sharply is when you show just enough of yourself in order to get muzzle clearance so that you are a smaller target to hit. Peeking wide is the opposite. In general, peeking sharply is better as you are presenting a smaller target to your opponent. However, sometimes peeking wide can surprise your opponent, especially if you're extremely close to them, forcing them to have to track your fast movement. Should you stand or crouch when framing? Crouching gives you a recoil buff, but standing allows you to be more mobile. In general, I try to crouch whenever I am peeking a distance that I am unable to accurately spray while standing. For example, this is my standing spray at this range versus crouching spray. Peeking with an off angle can be beneficial to catch an opponent who is aiming at standing head height off guard. However, the risk is if they hear you jump, then they will know exactly where you are and you are a little more vulnerable while jumping if they just so happen to peek at that exact moment. For specific spots on labs, I use a flashlight because even with cranked post effects, it is still sometimes difficult to see a player. For example, here without a light, and with a light. In general, lean whenever possible, as you are able to see a fraction more for the same exposure of your body. I lean by pressing Q or E then fat fingering A or D respectively with the same finger. So if I am strafing and leaning right, then my pointer finger is pressing E and D. However, if that is uncomfortable, then you can try swapping Q and E so that to strafe and lean right, your fourth finger or ring finger is pressing Q and your pointer finger is pressing D. Or you can use your thumb to lean and swap Q and E for V and B. Some players even use mouse buttons or foot pedals. Consider the pace of your routine. Slower is not always better. Faster is not always more reckless. Sometimes you will need to execute your routine faster in order to be able to contest objectives like black room on labs before players loot it and extract. Or flank a player via an uncleared area in order to catch them off guard, such as if they're in server and you're peeking from server balcony a quick flank through green stairs can catch them off guard. But if you have to take the time to clear it properly, then you will lose some surprise advantage. And finally, if you're fast enough, then you will only need to worry about players in front of you, as the faster you are, the more difficult it will be for players to sneak up behind you. Slowly clearing has a couple of benefits. It is much easier to precisely clear every corner, like so. And it is quieter to walk or crouch walk compared to occasionally sprinting, which could alert players in front of you. Clear angles with the intention to kill, rather than just becoming lazy and going through the motions. You must practice being psychologically disciplined throughout your raids. And a fun way to drill this is to play offline battles against some friends and ask them to hide in corners while you go find them. To apply these concepts to your favorite map, begin by identifying the hotspots on that map and start there. For example, if your favorite map is factory, one of the hotspots is the office. Identify the different pathways to approach the office. For example, stairs on the gate three side, stairs gate zero side, and the sky bridge. Run through each approach with the above concepts in mind, record your gameplay and watch it back. Once you have a preliminary routine, test it in live raids. Execute it exactly the same way every time and perfect it. Then let your enemies teach you the flaws in your routine and Let's make go. small adjustments to remove those flaws. Be careful that your adjustment to fix one problem doesn't create Another other one. problems. Another After you have a working routine for each hotspot, gradually expand it out to all parts of your favorite map. Remember to be a perfectionist for all parts of your routine. For example, this is terrible and this is better. Remember, there can be multiple solutions to clearing each area with different pros and cons. 
and sometimes there will be someone in a random corner and you're just gonna die. That's the game. Don't change your whole routine just because of a one in a thousand death. With each run of your routine, you are playing the odds and you will have to accept that some deaths are simply out of your control. Finally, don't blindly follow my advice. At the end of the day, if you are surviving and killing players, then it doesn't matter what parts of my advice you are employing or ignoring. In the description, I'll put full videos of my clearing routine for labs and links to any other resources that I think might be helpful. Developing a clearing routine isn't a new concept. FPS players in particular in CS have been doing this for years. For more about this idea, I'll slap some peeking guides in the description. Please let me know if you found anything in the video helpful or if there's anything I missed, I'm always looking to improve my own gameplay. Thanks for watching.